Why is it so dark? Hi, so today we're going to look through Edwardian beauty tips, um, which I found in Margaret Mixter book, which I found on Glamour Day's website. I'm not sure if you know about it, but it's like a really cool website with lots of like vintage tips. Okay, so basically the book can be found on Archive.org and it's 1910 original book on women's beauty. Okay, how to give a dry shampoo, that's literally what's written here. Many women injure their scalps by shampooing too often. Of course, cleanliness is as necessary for a hygienic condition of the head as it is for the body, but too much washing drives the oils. Actually, I think that's quite a modern thought. A dry shampoo is one of the best kinds. I don't know why, why I feel like reading it in like fake RP. Here is a recipe for a dry for an Edwardian dry shampoo. Okay. Two ounces of lavender water, half ounce of borax, one and one half ounces of orange flower water, and one quarter of an ounce of tincture of cochineal? Like, at least four ingredients are some kind of water. How can this be a dry shampoo? From what I understand, the way they understood the dry shampoo is a shampoo that makes your hair dry rather than the actual form of the shampoo. But it's still funny because it's, it's a completely different perception of what we think is a dry shampoo. Here's another interesting beauty tip, which sounds like this. Hair needs air more than shampoos in summer. More necessary even than washing is airing the hair in the summer when no matter how oily the scalp may be, it should not be shampooed oftener than once a month. Ooh. Okay. As to the airing, a woman whose tresses are thick should never fail to do them in two braids at night. To twist them on the head and pin there is to invite thinness. So basically, if you if you sleep in a bun, I, I guess that's what they're saying, you make your hair thinner. One braid is better than that, but the scalp gets no refreshment even then, but by making two braids, ventilation may be secured. So basically, if you make two braids, the hair is allowed to breathe, at least that's what they're saying. Oh, the instant a sour odor comes, washing must be done. I think an egg shampoo is the best. For this, raw eggs are beaten. A tablespoon of water is being added to each egg. These eggs are rubbed into the scalp and over the hair. No soap being used. I'm not, I'm not really sure about this egg idea, but I think I remember my grandma saying that she used to set her hair using eggs. But, like, how can you wash your hair with eggs? Not true. Bleaches and dyes. No, that's that's about skin. So there's a bleach for tan, which is very useful, I guess, especially for someone who's into vintage things. So basically, they have like a tagline here which says, "Lemon is bleach for tan and sunburn." On summer dressing tables, lemons should always be placed, for this fruit is an excellent bleach and light freckles, a thin coat of tan, and stains of various kinds that assail the skin disappear with its use. Be it understood, however, that the acid is not strong enough to remove deep color and that only by applying it constantly will it be eff efficacious. <laughs> also, like every other such whitener, it has disadvantages and constant application of it is drying. But how, how would they use it? Would they just squeeze lemon all over the, their bodies? Rather than squeeze the juice and put on with a cloth, as is sometimes done, I like to rub it on directly. <laughs> to do this, the lemon may be cut in two and one half becomes a swab or pad that is roughly rubbed over the surface. So basically, women would sit with halves of, of lemons and would just go like this. I wonder if that works though, like if I, if I rubbed my body with lemon every day, would it literally like bleach my skin? Why are PDFs so slow? Because okay, so here are some for formulas for bleaching creams, but to be honest, they don't sound very safe. Black and brown dyes for gray hair. That's quite shocking. Okay, so basically they tell you to dye your gray hair with tea, which might actually work, to be honest. 
it's like a very delicate coloring, but I used to dye like laces and white fabrics with tea and it actually works. It must be applied nightly though. And unless care is taken, we'll stain the pillow in case you wouldn't notice that, so... I mean, you know, if you, if you used to wash your hair once a month, I guess if you dye your hair with tea every night, it would probably stay. I'll just skip the rest because I'm not really into dyeing hair anyway. There are some like chemicals that I don't really know what they are, like peroxide of hydrogen. Uh, thanks for the info, but I have no clue what that is. Drying hair with heat injures the roots. That sounds pretty modern. I wonder if they had blow dryers in Edwardian era. I don't think so. So what could they mean? Like curling them afterwards? Edwardian blow dryers. 1910 blow dryers? No, I don't think they had any. No, it's like 1920s are the first blow dryers. Okay, <laughs> I get it now. So it says, no matter what the necessity for a quick dry, the temptation to hang the tresses over a radiator or before a register must be resisted. And the locks must be dried by rubbing with towels. What do they mean hang the tresses over a radiator? Is that what women would do if they were in a hurry just like... <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, I guess that's it. Um, if you're interested in any more weird Edwardian beauty tips, just head to archive.org and look for Margaret Mixter's book, which is called... Um, I don't know what it's called, just, just look for Margaret Mixter. Um, I'll probably post a link in the description anyway.